Teachable Moments with April podcast is back, and I'm your host, April. I'm excited to share some new content for you, courtesy of our friends at Unity Ministry Publications. Here is just a preview of some of the content we'll be exploring together. Finding Peace Through Prayer Change Your Thinking, Change Your Life Healing Thoughts Spiritual Keys to Aging Well The Spiritual Journey from Addiction to Recovery Return to Wholeness, Living Healed, Whole and Healthy Rise Above Fear and Worry, 30 Days to Fearless Living Finding Peace Through Prayer and so much more. I hope you will join me on this new chapter of Teachable Moments with April podcast. Hi, I'm April, your host of Teachable Moments with April podcast. If you're a new listener, welcome. If you're a returning listener, welcome back. Remember, Teachable Moments are all around us. Happy listening. Today's content is from Our Daily Word. What's the good news? We look at the book of Proverbs 25, 25. As cold water to a weary soul, so is good news from a far country. What's the good news today? I ask that question sometimes of people I know. If the person is a Christian, he might smile uh, and reply, the same as it was yesterday, God loves us. And both he and I rejoice that it will be the same tomorrow. Those who wrote and don't know about Christ, though, don't have such good news to share. We can understand why pessimistic novelist T.C. Boyle says if God doesn't exist and you have no purpose on earth, then it's a mighty mean place ruled by accident. I'd like to have a lot better news for everybody, but I don't. Despite personal disappointments and the evils we'll see in this world, life is not just a series of accidents. Our God is in ultimate control, making even man's wrath contribute to the fulfillment of his wise and loving purposes. Faith in the one who died on Calvary's cross and rose from the tomb is the antidote to dark despair. Faith is our Lord Jesus Christ and he gives a realistic reason for hope. When Jesus rose from the grave, he told two women to tell his disciples he was alive. Later, he commanded his followers to take the news to all the nations, Matthew 28, verses 9, 10, and 19. That's the good news we can proclaim to others. It's the answer to the riddle of our existence. Today's affirmation is this. The good news is not that Jesus lived and died, but that he died and he lives. continents from our daily word profit and loss we look at the book of first timothy 6 17 command those who are rich in this present age not to trust in certain riches but in the living god publisher frank doubleday had a one of a kind book that was bound in red russian leather he called it the book of the law and the prophets Unlike the portions of the Bible that we call the Law and the Prophets, P-R-O-P-H-E-T-S, Doubleday's book was an account of his business dealings and his financial profits, P-R-O-F-I-T-S. Okay, according to author uh, George Doran, the Red Book uh, contained Doubleday's morning prayers, oh, and evening vespers. In other words, it seemed that he worshipped money. Jesus knew how easily all of us are tempted to become devotees of money and all the things it can buy. But he warned, no one can serve two masters. You cannot serve God and mammon, money. Matthew 6, 24. We are idolaters if we put our trust in money as the ultimate source of our security and happiness. Our Lord also warned against being absorbed in the things that gratify our fleshly desires and self-centered ambitions. 
he asked, What profit is it to a man if he gains the whole world and he loses his own soul? Money can't bring us true and lasting profit. That can be found only by trusting the living God. 1 Timothy 6.17 As we put our hope in Him and live in obedience to His word, we will have eternal profit. Today's affirmation is this. None are so poor as those whose own wealth is money. Today's content is from Our Daily Word, Joy and Peace. We look at the book of Romans 5.1. Having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Lucky Lawrence thought he had it all. Like so many who seek fulfillment in fame, money, and success, he struggled to find real joy despite having all of those things. His real name was Larry Wright, and he was the number one rock and roll radio personality in Phoenix in the 1960s. But his family life was a mess, and he was fast becoming a straight-up alcoholic. As Mike Yorkie tells in his book, Touched by the Savior, the solution came to Lucky Lawrence when his wife, Sue, trusted Jesus as her Savior. Larry noticed the peace and joy in her life and the obvious change in her attitude toward him. Soon, he too asked Jesus to forgive him and be his Savior. Gone was the frustrating search for peace. In its place was the joy and peace of God. Larry and Sue have now served the Lord for more than 30 years. In Romans, we see the contrast between the two kinds of existence possible in this life as we know it. In Romans 1, 18-32, he read about the sad, frightening life of those who refuse to live for God. It's a life full of trouble and a lot of turmoil. But in Romans 5, 1-11, we see what happens when a person trusts Christ. We have peace, it says. We rejoice, we're told. And we have hope love and salvation. What a contrast. Which of these two worlds are you living in right now? Today's affirmation affirmation is this. No God, no peace. No God, and you will know peace. Today's content is from Our Daily Bread, Not a Dream. We look at the book of Ephesians 5.14. Wake up, sleeper, rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. It's like living in a dream you can't wake up from. People who struggle with what's sometimes called derealization or depersonalization often feel like nothing around them is quite real. While those who chronically have this feeling can be diagnosed with a disorder, it's believed to be a common mental health struggle, especially during stressful times. But sometimes the feeling persists even when life is seemingly good. It's as if our minds can't trust that good things are really happening. Scripture describes a similar struggle of God's people at times, to experience his power and deliverance as something real, not just a dream. In Acts 12, when an angel delivers Peter from prison and possibly execution, verses 2 and 4, the apostle is described as being in a daze, not sure it was really happening, verses 9 and 10. When the angel left him outside the jail, Peter finally came to his senses and realized it had all been real, verse 11. In both bad times and good, it can be hard sometimes to fully believe or experience that God is really at work in our lives. But we can trust, we can trust that as we wait on him, his resurrection power will one day become undeniably, wonderfully real. God's light will rouse us from our sleep into the reality of life with him. This devotional was written by Monica LaRose. Today's two questions are these. 